Thank you for the introduction. We are really excited to be here today. Hello, I'm Upendra Chitnes. I'm with my colleague, Hejun Lee. We are data engineers at Komodo Health. In this presentation, we will talk about data platform in our company. First, I will briefly talk about our company followed by an overview of healthcare data landscape relevant to this talk. I will then describe data ingestion architecture at a high level followed by details on the data ingestion stage. My colleague Hejun will then describe data processing stage. And then finally, we will briefly cover our future plans followed by a summary of this talk. Komodo Health is a privately held company established in 2014 with a mission to reduce the global health disease. We do it by transforming extraordinary amount of data into rich and meaningful insights. So what kind of healthcare data we are talking about? Sources of healthcare data are vast, siloed, and complex. One way to understand this data is from a patient perspective. When you are sick or taking care of sick people, you may visit a provider such as your PCP. The doctor may perform on-site tests and record them in a system. The doctor might recommend additional tests done from a lab which generates more data. This data is stored in what is called electronic medical record system. You may get pre prescription drugs procured from pharmacy, which generates more data. Pharmacy has relations with pharma companies. Medical and prescription benefits are paid by a payer, which in most cases is insurance a patient is subscribed to. Data is also generated by independent research and education institutes. This entire space is governed by policies and regulations controlled by government agencies. So you can imagine that in this data space, there are many, many actors, relations, regulations, and the data is siloed. However, this data is, if this data is properly sourced, aggregated, cleansed, encrypted, and sanitized, it could be extremely valuable for researchers to discover new drugs, treatments, and for commercial purposes, just to name a few. This is where Komodo comes to your rescue. The healthcare map is our foundation. We reconstruct patient journeys from siloed sources by linking de-identified patients with identified doctors, hospitals, pharmacies, and along other relevant dimensions. At the time of this presentation, Komodo has data on 330 million patients with 15 million new clinical encounters added daily. Six years of average historical patient journey with 15 to 20 years of publications and clinical trial data. We have built AI platform that leverages these data sets to answer questions like, how is recently introduced drug performing against comparable other drugs? What kind of marketing strategy would be useful in this area? What is the best way to allocate resources for a new clinical trial under consideration, just to name a few? We have most comprehensive view of healthcare data. In order to understand the data platform that manages this massive amount of data, I will start with describing at a high level how the data flows through our platform. Data in our platform can be viewed as moving through these stages. Data at sources shown on the left is copied to internal S3 buckets via sync stage, which is then ingested by ingestion stage. The data is then converted to common schema in the processing stage before storing it on Snowflake for downstream use cases. In this talk, we will not be focusing on the downstream use cases. There are many, many layers in the downstream use cases which create more complex data objects, customer facing applications and products built on AI platform and other interesting things. It could be a subject of a separate talk. Choice of tools for each stage is based on the requirements of that stage. For instance, we use Airflow for sync and ingestion stage, where we have been able to develop tooling to handle complexities in a systematic way. I will talk more about it in the next slides. We use Ascent for processing stage, where there is a need to develop complex data flows to clean, transform, validate, and convert to a common data model. My colleague Heijun will cover this stage in more detail later in the talk. We use Snowflake to store data transformed into a common data model. Snowflake is an interface between the data platform and the downstream use cases. All of these stages are automated end-to-end. -end. Sync and ingestion stages run on a schedule and processing data pipeline are triggered from ingestion tags. However, 
there are several challenges involved with implementing this architecture, starting with source data. As described earlier, we have several types of data, claims data, pharmacy data, lab records, EHR data, etc. There are several suppliers of each types of data. The data comes in varying sizes. Data is delivered in different ways, for instance, SFTP, S3, hard drive, or even downloaded at times. Each set, such as incremental or historical, can consist of a single file or tens of thousands of files. Further, the data delivery frequency could be daily, weekly, monthly, or even at times ad hoc. As you can see, there are many dimensions with each type to consider, which adds to the complexity of the ingestion stage. The first step in the process is to sync external data to Komodo internal buckets. This is done at the sync stage. All external data, including read deliveries and late deliveries are copied to internal S3 buckets. Syncing external data allows us to rerun ingestion DAX if necessary without worrying about file retention policies of external sources, connection speeds, and the likes. Next in the process is the ingestion stage where there is a lot going on. I have multiple slides describing just the ingestion stage alone. There are several important functions and features of this stage to consider. First, the main purpose of this stage is to perform minimal cleaning, transformation, and validation necessary to convert source data to a common format, which is Parquet in this case. Secondly, this stage, in this stage, we perform token transformations. At a high level, what it means is the following. Patient data on our platform is de-identified, and it comes from many different sources. In order to link these data sets effectively, we run a third party software that transforms the de-identified information to Komodo internal tokens, which are then used to join these data sets. It's a complex and resource consuming process. There are some important feature or requirements of this stage. First, this stage is responsible for ingesting not only incremental, but also historical data sets to ensure complete coverage. The data remains in source data model in this stage. It means we do not perform join segregations or any transformations that change the source data schema. For instance, if an input table has 10 columns at the end of this stage, it will have exactly those 10 columns. The metadata such as file name, timestamp, and relative path are preserved and passed on to the next stage for processing. And lastly, the data is ingested in batches of incremental or historical sets. Historical sets are usually one-time large batches of files, and incrementals are literally smaller batches delivered at certain cadence. Now that we know the functions and features of ingestion stage at a high level, I will dig a little bit deeper into the stage on the next slide. Ingestion DAC consists of query, extract, prepare, convert, and trigger steps. The structure of ingestion DAG is common across all sources. We manage source differences such as number of tables and columns via configurations. A generic DAG structure makes, makes it easy to understand and onboard new developers. It also enables us debugging and manage deployment configurations. For instance, if a certain task needs more memory, then we can configure only those tasks to land on bigger computing machines. This kind of flexibility to handle complex deployment makes Airflow suitable for ingestion stage. So how exactly we group the files? Query is the first step in the ingestion DAC. It forms a batch of files based on source-specific business logic and delivery cadence. For instance, some source deliver all the files in eight days window. Therefore, we form a batch consisting of files delivered in certain window of eight days. In other cases, we have name, file naming convention or some additional logic to consider in order to form a batch. Therefore, variation in delivery cadence and re-deliveries pose challenges in having a generic code for the query step. After forming an incremental or historical batch, the extract task physically copies the batch of files for further processing. The next step in the process is prepare step. Aim of the prepare step is to perform minimum cleaning, transformation, and validation necessary to convert to Parquet. 
Variation in original file formats and schema changes over time pose challenges to develop a generic code for this step. So schema changes are handled by use of some clever configuration management. As mentioned earlier, token transformation is an important function which is performed as part of the uh, processing step. We use third party software and there are limitations on supported file formats for performing token transformations. At the end of prepare step, we validate everything to ensure the schema is as expected. There are no columns with unexpected data and then and only then we convert it to parquet. After all files from a batch are converted to parquet, we automatically trigger processing stage in ascent. So the nature of the input source data, such as varying file size and number of files, result in occasional demand for high computational resources, which makes it necessary to have a deployment structure that is not only scalable, but also flexible to ensure computing costs are kept under control. We have de defined a deployment architecture that enables us to meet this challenge. Our cluster is built on AWS auto scaling groups and AWS Elastic Kubernetes service. ASG and EKS enable us to scale up and down nodes based on compute requirements. We don't need to keep a large cluster running all the time in anticipation of large workload happening at some point. Airflow scheduler and web server are deployed in pods. The scheduler uses EKS to launch Airflow executors and automatically brings them down and the task is done. When there are no more tasks running, the node itself is released. We use multiple ASGs, each with certain type of nodes, which gives us flexibility to schedule tasks with more computing needs on bigger nodes, while tasks with less computing needs are run on smaller nodes. This architecture enables us to have control over the computing cost. Some of our Airflow operators use Spark for parallel computing. The Airflow executors that use Spark operators launch Spark executor pods. We use Spark on Kubernetes Manager, which gives us flexibility of scaling the cluster based on resource requirement, just like the Airflow executors. So in summary, ingestion stage is responsible for defining batches, performing minimal transformations and validations necessary to convert to a common format. Processing is the next stage in the data flow that handles data from here. I will now hand over to my colleague, Heijun, to talk about it. All right, uh, thank you, Pendra. And hi, everyone. My name is Heijun Lee, and I'm working as a data engineer at Komodo Health. Today, I will talk about challenges, solutions, and trade-offs slash limitations that we faced while we are working for the processing stage. So until now, Pendra just described to you how we have structured the ingestion stage of fixed logical steps, and that Airflow provides us the flexibility to build the tools that we need to handle all the complexities. Previously, we used the same approach for the processing stage. However, we realized that the challenges are actually considerably different. So we recently changed the architecture to use Ascend instead as it better matches those specific challenges. With that being said, let me start with what the processing pipeline does. First, it cleans data elements because healthcare data is messy. Second, it transforms the source data model into the common data model for data usage. And third, it validates output data if the output data conforms to expectations so that data user can have consistent expectations. One thing quickly became clear was that the ETR topology of the processing stage cannot be captured by the fixed set of stages. So these are examples of two different processing data pipeline topologies. The red box is where the input data is picked up. And the blue box is the last step to generate the common data model data. The green box is where we can find the source specific topologies. As you can see, source specific transformations not only make topologies different per source, but also make them different from the common fixed DAG structure we used for the ingestion stage. The approach we used for ingestion stage becomes not suitable for the processing stage. So for this reason, 
we wanted to have a clear understanding of the challenges for the processing stage. Now here are some challenges that we have identified. First, every data source has a different data model. From schema to column definition or context, everything is different for each source. Naturally, a custom topology that is difficult to generalize becomes necessary to handle complex and source specific transformations. Second, healthcare data is in incremented data with different delivered frequencies. We need a way to process new data in isolation because we do not want to reprocess or change previously delivered data during the handling of new data. However, third, data reprocessing is needed not only when there is a redelivery of the data, but also when there, is, there are code changes. This is because keeping the association between the code and the data up to date is important. We need to backfill data when the code is changing. Fourth, resource management for jobs and data pipelines is also a, a challenging problem. Setting up retry logic and good error exposure are also challenging given the difficulty in differentiating what failures are worth retrying versus what failures need to be surfaced instead of simply being retried. Fifth, developing processing pipelines is time consuming because iterations require intensive data quality checks that add extra time to the development cycle. Complex transformation also makes having multiple developers working on the same data source or onboarding new engineers difficult. To tackle this, we decided to take advantage of the features from Ascend. From next slide, I'd like to share how we use the Ascend as well as the trade-offs slash limitations we identified. So for the first challenge, data dependencies among tasks are automatically tracked and updated. This enables flexibility in defining and modifying both task dependencies and code implementations. Any number of steps can be easily added to accommodate source specific and complex transformations. However, balance is needed here. If we add too many steps, that will increase the storage cost as well as time and computation overheads. We have to think about how many transformations we want to put it in each task versus how many different tasks and steps we want to have. For the second challenge, we use partitions to track incremental data batches along the entire data pipeline. Partition filtering allows only necessary data regardless of when the data processing is triggered. In other words, all data batches can be rerun in isolation without any other effort. These provide tremendous value, but still there is a limitation. Currently, only date or timestamp formats are supported and only one level of partition is allowed. We had a one case that one data batch was extremely big, so subpartitioning of data was necessary to make data processing more manageable. We wanted to use a unique ID column for this purpose. However, its data type was not in timestamp format, and second level partition was not supported. Thus, we had to create a new and synthetic partition column off of unique ID column. For the third challenge, code changes are automatically recognized and trigger data reprocessing. Reprocessing is propagated downstream if and only if output data is actually changed. However, these nice functionalities are not free. Code change recognition rules are strict. Uh, code changes to comments or white spaces will trigger data reprocessing. Data change recognition require collecting statistics on output data for all tasks, and this adds extra computation. So oftentimes, during the code review process, for example, we decide to update functions and logics for better implementation. Doc strings are updated for better readers' understanding as well. All these could trigger unnecessary data reprocessing. Understanding the consequences of making changes becomes important for this reason. For fourth challenge, resources are automatically assigned to tasks based on the factors such as data size. Among different tasks and data pipelines, 
resources are distributed based on timing, dependencies, and priority setting. Automatic retry is provided from the platform, and web UI can display code implementation and error messages together, which is helpful for debugging. In sum, these alleviate a good amount of work. However, this is not a one-size-fits-all solution. Good performing code is still a necessity because resource allocation cannot make poorly performing code perform well. Understanding how the platform works is also crucial because otherwise we may implement it in a way that the platform cannot optimize. Identifying the part that is prone to fail or frequent errors could be difficult since error logs will not be kept if the retry works. One good example of platform understanding is this. The data is used as a comparison point for a partition filtering has to be set as a first input. And it also has to be partitioned for the partition column before it is used. Otherwise, the output could be incorrect or optimization will not be achieved. For the fifth challenge, deploying and running pipelines can be conveniently done. If we roll back to the code version that was running within the data retention time window, rollback can be done instantly without data reprocessing. Provisioning a copy of existing data pipeline for experimenting can be quickly done as well. All these help reduce the development time. However, a caution is needed. Developers could interrupt each other by updating upstream data for their works if they do not coordinate well. If one developer was doing a quick experiment via web UI and another developer deployed changes to the same data pipeline without communication, then the first person's work may can be removed. If this happened, development time could increase unexpectedly. So until now, we looked into what challenges make building processing pipelines different from ingestion. Complex and hard to generalize transmission logic that requires intensive and iterative effort on data quality brings several challenges for our processing stage. We were able to handle these challenges with the platform offerings of Ascent. However, our approaches and implementations have to be intentional and well thought through because there are still some trade-offs and limitations. I hope that the process we went through for processing stage will be helpful for someone face similar challenges. Thanks for listening. And next, my colleague Upendra will talk about the future plans and close our presentation with a summary. I'm handing it back to you, Upendra. Thanks, Ajahn. Now that we have described you our current data platform, it is time to talk about our future. Among other things, one of the important features we are planning to work is to define and implement an effective observability solution. Observability is a fairly generic word and could have different meanings. In this context, we are looking at one, observability of data flow stages, and two, observability of data. For observability of stages, we plan to measure and display performance of data flow stages to gain actionable insights. We are focusing on usage of AWS S3 and EC2, Snowflake compute and storage cost, ascent platform resource usage, among other things. For data observability, we plan to detect and display data downtime matrix, such as whether expected incremental or historical set was delivered or not. If a particular data set is not fully processed, which stage is the blocker? Data freshness, volume, and lineage are other important set of measures to detect and track. Unexpected drop in the volume could indicate problems in the delivery or processing of it at some stage. So I hope our talk has convinced you that Comodo Health has built a modern data platform that meets the technical and business challenges of healthcare data management. The data flow architecture includes multiple stages that are customized for specific needs of each stage. For instance, sync and ingestion use airflow to meet varying resource demands that need greater control on the compute cluster and customization of operators. 
while processing stage uses ascent to develop source specific transformations. And also we are actively updating the platform to meet future needs. And we are very excited about it. We are going to stick around for a little while. If you guys have any questions, thank you for listening.